What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Shots of Brown, man. I wanted to come back with some, with some, uh, with some shit, right? Last night I had them set up. I was just on YouTube surfing and I just ran across the, um, Houston reality show and I seen a few of y'all had asked about that and I wanted to touch on it. So today I just wanted to touch on a few things like relationships and shit with the Houstons and the Browns and things of that nature. But what's crazy is last night as I was looking over the whole uh, as I was looking over the whole Houston on our own reality show with Pat, Chrissy, my cousin Mita, Nick, Nick Gordon, um, Gary. It was just so crazy to me that that Pat greenlighted those scenes of Chrissy, you know, being being um, inebriated, not being all the way right. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't believe that she greenlighted those scenes to be out, which I can believe. But that just goes to show you, you know what I'm saying? Um, that just goes to show you the agenda. You know what I'm saying? These people. When you sit back and think about it, Alicia was, I mean, I'm sorry, Pat was the um, executive producer on that show, just like Alicia was the executive producer on uh, Uncle B's latest projects when it comes to television. The only thing that Alicia wasn't executive producer over as far as Uncle B in television was, um, you know, the B and Bobby Brown story. Um, that was Uncle Tommy who put that whole deal together with the being Bobby Brown. But as I was sitting and watching that that Houston's, it was the Houston shit, it was just like you can see the fakeness of it. You can see the fakeness in it. And then for the for y'all who um it's so crazy too to see Pat and Gary together because even back then Pat didn't really like she couldn't stand Gary. She couldn't really stand for Gary to be around because you know Gary and I I, I, I want to say this too because I had seen Pat when she had did that video where she was dogging Auntie Whitney and uh and Chrissy it was so crazy to me because she was on there you know I want to touch on a few things on that she was on there dragging Auntie Whitney in 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 and Bobby Chris and Uncle Bobby too. She you know she had a few things to say about him as well, but she was dragging Auntie Whitney and, and Chrissy like they wasn't shit, and they made you who you are today. If it wasn't for Whitney's hard work that she put in, you would never had been nothing. So for you to even be speaking those ill will, those those words, that shit that she was talking about her, that goes to show what kind of person you are. Know what I'm saying? Because that lady changed your life. Know what I'm saying? Y'all, you and Gary was living great. House damn near the same size as Auntie Whitney and Uncle B's right around the corner. Know what I'm saying? So Auntie, Lee, Auntie Whitney took care of her whole family. So for y'all, for you to speak down on her in her death and down on Chrissy like that, you know, that goes to show you that you were, it was never no real love with, with, with Pat. It was always about the dollar. Know what I'm saying? And that's what pisses me off is that these people come from the outside and they get into these celebrity families and they come into these celebrity families and they milk these celebrity. I mean, they, they, they milk the situation. Know what I'm saying? And, and can really give a damn about the celebrity or that celebrity's family. Know what I'm saying? Come on now. Pat couldn't stand to be around Gary. Look at Pat and then look at Gary. Know what I'm saying? You got Pat, you know what I'm saying? She's a, she's a, a strong, shrewd businesswoman. And then you got Gary over here who, who is a known damn crackhead. Know what I'm saying? He um He's a known crackhead. Gary would go on binges. I remember even back then, Gary would go on binges and be fucking, be gone for days, weeks, be gone out on drug binges and shit. Know what I'm saying? So um, for her to say that statement, oh, well, Gary took Ray to school. Bobby never did that or Whitney never did this. They didn't care about Chrissy schooling and this, that, and the third. Man, Gary wasn't, Gary was w w off worse than Auntie Whitney and Uncle B. He was doing the same shit. 
Gary wasn't uh Gary wasn't no no hell of a person like that. How you try to uplift him to be? I'm sorry, y'all. Something uh, full in my damn eye. But yeah, Gary wasn't no damn person how like that. How you try to dictate him to be? Know what I'm saying? Whitney put you in position. If it wasn't for her, you wouldn't have been shit. But then also look at the the text thread that little Gary put out between him and Chrissy. Chrissy was saying in the thread how what kind of person Pat was. Pat was manipulating situations, having Sissy think it's one way with her when it's, I mean, Pat was, Pat, she was, I mean, she just did a lot of dirty shit. Um, as far as my relationship with Pat, Pat was always phony to me. You know what I'm saying? I would see Pat all the time. She would come by to the mansion and things of that nature. I would see Pat and, um, you know, Pat wouldn't really speak. See, the thing is, too, some of the Houstons, they never really accepted or liked the Browns from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And this was even when I was a kid. You got to think when Uncle B and them got married, I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? I was like six years old. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I can even remember then, like even my run-ins with Sissy Houston as a kid till now as a grown man. Sissy never... Sissy, you know, much love too. I would never disrespect Sissy because... I mean, that's Auntie Whitney's mother. But Sissy wasn't a friendly lady. You know what I'm saying? Sissy never really spoke or said hi. You would speak to Sissy and Sissy would just look at you like you was crazy. You know what I'm saying? And not speak at all. You know, but that's, that, that comes from, you know, they never liked Uncle B. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning. You know what I'm saying? They never felt like Uncle B and Auntie Whitney should have been together. So, of course, that trickled down to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? They, we don't like him. We don't like the Browns, you know what I'm saying? And that went the same thing with damn, um, with Pat, you know what I'm saying? Pat didn't never really care for, Pat didn't really care for the Browns, shit. Pat didn't even care for the Houstons, so, you know what I'm saying? Her caring for the Browns, shit. What am I care about the Browns for? She wasn't, I mean, she wasn't, she didn't have no real love for the Browns. She wasn't able to get no money off the Brown name, you know what I'm saying? So she wasn't. She ain't give a damn about the Browns. But it's just crazy um, just watching that shit. But but Gary, though, my relationship with Gary, you know, Gary always Gary always been, he been, you know, cool. You know, Gary was kind of fake, too. You know what I'm saying? I would see Gary all the time. He would come and be on his shit. He'll be high and, you know, regular shit. Last time I seen Gary was a few years ago. And uh, me, him, and Uncle Bobby was together in a in a hotel room and having a conversation, and shit got real. I, um, I might talk about that conversation one day, but not right now. But um, you know, but you know, they all got their shit with them, and even Gary, you know, they was all jealous auntie with me, man. You know, even Gary and Pat with them um, taking certain shit out. I mean, when Auntie Whitney passed, they they did a lot of foul shit. Um, going in the room and staging different things, taking shit out of Auntie Whitney's room. We don't know what was taken, what, what they took, what, I mean, but it's just they, a lot of crazy shit. So, um, no, I don't trust Pat. I don't trust Gary. Um, only Houston's that I really got love for is um, Uncle Mike. I mean, Uncle Mike, he always been 100. I mean, he always loved us always it was always open arms whenever he seen us it was nephew what's up how you been you know what i'm saying uncle mike it was always love and then you also got to think too like i come from the generation i'm not in a generation with uncle b and and um i'm up under i'm in with i'm with the kids you know what i'm saying so um i remember blair and and Lil mike and and um asia and gary and you know what i'm saying it's all love i i, I still um speak to a few of the Houston's, a few Houston, um, Auntie Whitney's nieces and nephews, well, nieces on her side. Um, we still chop it up and communicate a little bit, but it's all love. Um, as far as my cousin Mita though, I know y'all was asking about my cousin Mita on the, uh, on the Houston reality show. Okay. My cousin Mita is my aunt Bethy's daughter, which is my mother, um, you know, my Aunt Bethy, you know, is my mother's older sister, Uncle Bobby's older sister. If you've been watching my interviews and stuff, um, the interview I did with Gerard, Mimi, excuse me, Mimi is Gerard's oldest sister. 
And she's also the sister to my cousin, Hakeem. If y'all been paying attention, I did a story about Hakeem with us in LA uh, with the Thug Loving video shoot. So yeah, that's how they are. I just want to connect the dots so y'all can know where everybody come from. So Mimi comes from my aunt, Bethy. That's her um, daughter. But yeah, she was on the um, Houston on my own reality show. And um, she actually started working for Auntie Whitney right fresh out of high school. Soon as she graduated high school, Auntie Whitney had um, Auntie Whitney had hired her to be on the road and you know just babysit Chrissy and and do things, um, you know, just watch over Chrissy and shit like that. Um, I remember when Mimi graduated, Auntie Whitney had brought her a, um, a brand new blue Jeep truck. Um, when she, as soon as she graduated and. From there, she she got on the road and, and started um, touring with Auntie Whitney and, and being with Auntie Whitney. Um, mind you, the nephews was always with Uncle Bobby. You know what I'm saying? We always toured with Uncle B since... Shit. We was kids since Don't Be Cruel. You know what I'm saying? I was I remember being four or five years old on stage. So we always toured with Uncle B, but Mimi ended up um, going with Auntie Whitney. And when Mimi went with Auntie, um, when I, Mimi went with Auntie Whitney, I'm gonna just be honest. It, it kind of um, caused disturbance with Mimi and Uncle B, and maybe some of the people who I mean, Uncle B's people who kiss his ass, because um, Mimi, I guess some you know some people felt like Aunt Mimi was coming in between um, choosing sides when it came to. Uncle B and Auntie Whitney, know what I'm saying? She would damn always be with the Houston side, know what I'm saying? She would always damn be going off on Uncle B or be fit like if, I mean, she was always in the mix of that. And they didn't, um, they didn't, some of the family didn't like that. They felt like Mimi was, uh, she it was like, she, some people felt like she disowned the Browns and was, I mean, trying to be a Houston. Um, I love Mimi. Mimi always been a sister to me. Um, you know, my Mimi, our grandmother raised us. So, you know, Mimi was always raised like a little sister to me. Um, so me and Mimi always been close. Me and Mimi still close to this day. Mimi, shit, now that she's actually, um, she back, she close with the family now and everything. But yeah, that's just how that happened. Mimi always, you know, straight out of high school, Mimi was with Auntie Whitney from Jump and always, always with Chrissy. She watched over Chrissy and things of that nature. So, that's what that was. But you know, um, there was a few people who, like I said, who was, who felt like Mimi got herself involved in Uncle B and Auntie Whitney's relationship and shit. And she went against the family, I guess. Some people feel like that, but that's my little sis that always been loved with, been loved with Mimi, um, with me. Um, but yeah, but I just remember them. But even with the being, the being Bobby Brown reality show, I remember when we, when you know they started filming that, when Uncle T had put that whole situation together. Mind you, when that, when they started filming that, you know, I had just got this cut. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had just, I was fresh out the hospital. My face was out to hair. Um, once again, if you're new to the channel, you can go back to that too about me getting when I you know I got cut in in uh Justin's by BMF or whatever I um did a video on that too but yeah I had got I, I was fresh out the hospital when they was recording that and I'll never forget um that was just the real that was just real you know what I'm saying that was the that was the realest reality show to hit network you know what I'm saying because Uncle B and Auntie Whitney they gave you the real them that's really how none of that shit was scripted know what i'm saying that's how, really how they was that's really how shit was back then <laughs> know what i'm saying um i think i was on um the episode where they went to malibu and things of that nature i was really not even trying to be on camera for real because you know my face i was looking so damn crazy i wasn't even really trying to be in, involved in it you know, I was around uh, during some of the filming and some of the taping, but I wasn't really um, trying to be involved. But I remember one day, funny story, man. 
Fucking, I remember uh, on set, you know, and what me and Uncle T always been like this. So I get on, on set one day, I pulls up to the set and Uncle T had on some shades just like these. He's sitting there, he's standing in the corner. He got his arms crossed like this. And um, I walk up on him. I'm like, what's up, Unc? Go to put my hand out and dap him and shit. Unc got real Hollywood on me. He just... He just stayed in this position and just was looking at me like, like, nigga, who the fuck is you talking to me? Unc got real Hollywood on me that day. Uncle T, I love you though. Um, but you got, he got Hollywood on me that day. I never understood. I never understood that shit. But there was moments though, they would, Uncle T and Uncle B, they would get on their Hollywood shit at times, man. I'll do a video on how they, on, on that too. But they would get on a they would get on a high horse at times and shit like that. But it was all love. It was all good. But even with that though, Uncle T. One thing I love about Uncle T, and I will always respect about Uncle T. Uncle T always been a a, a stand up individual, and he's very Uncle T is family oriented. You know what I'm saying? Um, Uncle T always been trying to keep the family together. You know what I'm saying? He um he's like Ma, you know what I'm saying? Ma, my grandmother, she was the the glue to the family and once my grandmother passed away, nobody really, nobody from the family really stood up and took control. You know what I'm saying? Um after my grandmother passed. And everybody really sort of looked to Uncle T to do it to sort of take to, to take that role to um to to lead the family and you know just be the 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 the, the, the patriarch of the family and, and 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 lead the family you know what I'm saying we looked at Uncle T but it was like Uncle T was so Uncle T was so I mean you couldn't certain things Uncle T couldn't be in charge of you know what I'm saying um Uncle T for one he's not ever if Uncle Bobby's wrong or right you know what I'm saying? Uncle B could be dead ass wrong. Uncle T's not gonna go against that. You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna he's not gonna be like, yo, Bob was wrong. He's gonna side with Bob and he's gonna make excuses for Bob uh forever. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I mean that's just how Uncle T is. So it was I mean it was kinda um kinda uh, kinda I mean I guess it wasn't I don't know man. It, it, it's just Uncle T got the, re but Uncle T has the respect of everyone in the Brown family to where he could have, he could have um, did that. But you know, Uncle T, he's just not going to go against Uncle B. And when you, when you do that, when you're ahead of something, you have to lead the family the right way. When somebody's wrong, they wrong, you got to call them out. You know what I'm saying? But Uncle T, well, he's not really that individual to do that. One thing I can say, like the strongest people, the strongest people in this family, and this is just real shit, is the woman. The strongest, I mean, is is the woman. Like, if I had to choose who, I'm, if, like, all my mother, my nephew, I mean, my, I'm sorry, my mother, my aunts, and my uncles and shit. If I had to choose, if I had to choose who I would go to war with, I'm picking a woman. I'm picking my mother, and I'm picking. Um, Auntie Lily, because I know, you know what I'm saying? I know that, I know that they gone, I mean, they ready. They're not backing down, they ain't, I mean, they stronger, you know, they just strong women, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not saying Uncle T and Uncle B ain't strong, they, you know, it's just different. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. They, um... My mother and Auntie Lily, man, they just damn. They just some of the realest. They the realest motherfuckers from this family. I'm gonna just be real. I'm gonna just be real. Um, real shit. But like I was saying, um, like I was saying though, it's just that damn. I remember even with the whole being Bobby Brown situation, I really believe that. Cause I just remember back when in the during the filming, like after the Being Bobby Brown series came out, I remember a lot of people 
in Auntie Whitney's ear. I just remember a, a, a lot of the talks that was going around saying that that wasn't a good look for Auntie Whitney to have did that. The being Bobby Brown show, um, she shouldn't have did it. it. It made her look bad. You know, it was a lot of things like that going around. And I think that sort of had, you know, some of that sort of played a part in, um, with the divorce and shit too. Cause now that I think about it, it's like after the taping, after the taping of that being Bobby Brown season one, everything got weird. It just got weird. The energy just got weird. It was just, shit was weird. It was, shit got real weird, man. It did. Shit got real weird. And I just think it was because, you know, it was so many people in both Uncle B and Auntie Whitney's ear about that. And um, I remember they was doing the season two. And I don't, you know, I don't. It was something in the mix on why they didn't um, put it out. I want to say that they didn't want Auntie Whitney to be in. Um, Auntie Whitney's people didn't want her to be involved in it no more. And it was some shit with it like that. And the whole shit just collapsed. Um, the whole the whole little deal just collapsed. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I just remember, man, that shit got weird. That shit got weird. Around that time, it was like shit was crazy. You know what I'm saying? And even then, even then, you know, Uncle B, um, you know, obviously was, you know, on his shit too. And I seen somebody say, I see Uncle B um, be saying that he was clean. He was clean in um, like the early 2000, like 2000 or something. I don't know when exactly he got clean, but I know it wasn't 2000 because shit, we was in, we filmed Thug Loving video shoot in 2003 and shit. Uncle B and them was still using, my mother and them was still using. As far as I can remember, shit, um, they were still using that after, during the whole process of the being Bobby Brown. Uh, after that, my mother and all of them. Um, that shit used to really affect me though, in a, in a, in a, in a lot of ways, like my mother's drug use. Um, Cause you know, I come from that. I come from drug use from both parents. You know what I'm saying? As a, since a kid, you know what I'm saying? I've been going through drug use and dealing with addiction with my parents, not just my parents, but shit, my whole family, both sides. So I seen how drugs affect you, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I never, uh, never really got addicted to shit like that other than, you know, smoking weed and shit like that. But, um, yeah, it was just a lot of shit, man. And, uh, even this, I remember damn, I remember damn um, Uncle B one night, we was all at a family event and fucking Uncle B had got into it with Auntie Whitney. And this is really what hurt me with Uncle Bobby. This is really what hurt me back then with him and really made me look at him in another light. Like, damn, Unc, man. Because one thing, Uncle B, he was jealous. He used to get, he used to be, he 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 used to be jealous, bro. And my cousin Jared, which is um my uncle Tommy's son, one day we're at a family event and then Uncle B and Auntie Whitney get into it. And Uncle B leaves Auntie Whitney there. He drives off and just leaves her there. And fucking Jared ended up taking Auntie Whitney home. And when he took her home, um. Uncle B tried to accuse Jared of sleeping with Auntie Whitney. Why? I don't know. That, that one, I mean, we looked, I mean, that was our aunt. We looked at her like we look at Auntie Lily or Auntie Carol or, you know what I'm saying? So, him sleeping with Auntie Whitney, nah. I mean, I don't know if he was high or whatever it was, but he used to do shit like that. But he tried to accuse Jared of sleeping with Auntie Whitney, and he hasn't. He he's he stopped speaking to Jared behind that shit. 
and when and Jared ended up passing, probably like a year later, he ended up uh, getting killed in Boston. Um, God rest his soul, my cousin Jared. I got him tatted on my arm. He with me forever. But yeah, when he passed, man, Uncle B didn't show up to the funeral because he still hold that resentment. He was still holding on to that that uh, Jared was sleeping with Auntie. He slept with Auntie Whitney because he took her home. Jared ain't sleep with Auntie Whitney, man. And that really sort of fucked me up with Uncle B because it was always the nephews and Uncle B. You know what I'm saying? We was always like this. Always the nephews and Uncle B. It was If you seen Uncle B, you seen me, you seen Kelsey, you seen Hakeem. And I mean, um, it was just crazy though when that shit happened to Jared and, um, Uncle B never showed up to the damn, he didn't show up to the funeral when he was on, he was on the damn eulogy as a, as a pallbearer, but he held on for that shit for so long, something that he made up in his head that he didn't even, he didn't even come and show his pro, his nephew, you know, the proper respects on sending them home and saying goodbye to him and shit. So that sort of always sort of bothered me. Like, damn. As much as we love you and as much as you said you love us, you know what I'm saying? Why would you even think something like that? But then not even just that. Why would you even, I mean, not show up to a funeral with your nephew? Because of because of something that you made up in your head, you know what I'm saying? So that always um, sort of fucked with me. That right there, I think, is the first time. That's the that's the um, that's what made me start looking at Uncle B kind of differently. Because I never understood that. I didn't understand why he. Um, I never understood why he did that to Jared, but um, God rest Jared's soul, you know what I'm saying, um, I was a good dude, man, he was really um, getting his life on track and shit, going to Morehouse College, he was doing this shit, and just got, just got caught up in some shit and lost his life behind it, you know what I'm saying, yeah, that's crazy, but as far as, um, I know some people was asking me about Robin, have, was I around um, when Robin was employed when Auntie Whitney? You got to think I was a little boy then. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, around the time when Uncle B and Auntie Whitney got married, I was probably like five, six years old. You know what I'm saying? I'll post some pictures on my Instagram too for y'all to see. Um, y'all can either follow me on my on the Shots of Brown page. It's on Instagram at Shots of Brown, or you can follow me on my personal Instagram at certified underscore shizzy which is s-h-i-z-z-y but no as i can remember i never really met robin i mean i'm pretty sure she was um we was both at the at the at the wedding together but i've never really nah i was a kid man i never really um chopped it up i didn't never really know too much of rock too much about robin or i didn't know too much about robin i mean i was a little i was a little boy back then I was a little boy back then, um, so I didn't really know Robin. You know, and I, um, I just Pat was always in control of the shit um, as I was growing up. But even then, you know, even growing up, even as I think about it back then, with being in the mansion and shit, Pat used to Auntie Whitney used to look at Pat in a certain way. Auntie Whitney didn't really, I, I, you know, it's obvious Auntie Whitney obviously trusted Pat in the beginning. You know, and she had to for her to put her in that position. But I think after a time, after Auntie Whitney started losing respect and losing trust for her, because I remember Auntie Whitney would always just say little shit and and be failing away about Pat when Pat came around. And Chrissy never liked Pat. Chrissy never liked Pat. Chrissy never liked Pat. Um. Yeah, and Auntie Lily, Auntie Whitney, she never really, she wasn't really liking feeling Pat, her damn self. So um, yeah, that shit was crazy though. 
But as far as my um, relationship with the Houstons, man, it's all love. Like I said, I, I talked to, um, you know, I talked to a few of them on Instagram and things of that nature. So it's all love. But with the Brown family, my relationship with the Browns right now, my relationship with the Browns is pretty cool. I talk to pretty much everybody in the family, you know, except with um, a few people, which is cool, you know what I'm saying? In due time, when the timing is right and people understand some things, they'll understand, um, you know, they'll understand what I'm doing. This shit ain't about nothing about but me just speaking my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm just giving y'all my life, my experiences, shit that I've been through, the shit that I mean. That's it. But I, I, I you know, but I am going to speak on shit that I see that's wrong, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I see that we, we, we getting treated wrong, I'm going to speak on it. You know what I mean? So that's just what it is. But um, I appreciate y'all for listening, man. Much love to you. I'm going to drop y'all another video tomorrow. I told you I got these shirts. I, this, this was just a test shirt that I did. I, got a, I made a few test shirts. And these aren't the official ones because I don't have my shot glass in here. And I don't want the red lighting. It's going to be different. So this was just a test shirt that I, some test shirts that um, we made up. I'm going to have some these, these shirts that I'm doing. It's going to be real dope. That's why I'm just taking my time with them because I don't want to just put anything out there you know what i'm saying um this shirt won't be the shirts that i send y'all it's gonna be way flyer than this but i appreciate y'all make sure y'all subscribe hit that like button comment i appreciate all y'all man all y'all was like family to me man for real because should i just like how the conversations we have i appreciate the support that y'all show the love that y'all show and we're gonna keep this shit going man um anything that y'all want me to do a video on y'all drop in the comments i'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do it for y'all right so i appreciate y'all much love until next time shots of brown baby